Hello, my name is Lucas, this is a bit of lit, and I'm here to talk about Trash by Andy Mulligan. And this is an author who uh, is from London and has gone all over the world, like Brazil, India, the Philippines, uh, to teach theater and, and these kind of things. And now spends his time, as it says in the back, between London and Manila. Uh, Trash is about three young boys, Gardo, Raphael, and Rat, uh, who are these young boys who live in Trash, searching uh, the muck, the grime, uh, for anything that they can get their hands on and make a few pesos off of to survive. They are tr It is truly a story of the have-nothings, um, and of course, actually, we see different layers of it because Rat is even lower on the totem pole, uh, struggling even more. Uh, so gray and dirty that he can walk through the trash effortlessly without anybody noticing. Um, anyway, one day they come across a bag that the police are after because, um, well, <laughs> there are a lot of reasons they're after it. Uh, there is a case of missing funds, missing money. Uh, this is a story of corruption and poverty and uh, adventure in a way um, and changing your life uh, um, and dreams and this kind of stuff. Uh, told from different perspectives, we get chapters from... Uh, Raphael, we get chapters from Rat, we get chapter or Junjun, and we get chapters from Gardo, and we get chapters from Father Juilliard, who is the teacher at the local missionary, who comes across these young boys and starts telling their story from his perspective, as well as Olivia, who is a, a sister. Um, and then, of course, we've got these other pages later in the book that are some news articles, or news clippings. Um, there's more than the two I just showed, but um, that all come together to tell this story from different perspectives so we can put things together. Um, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> it is quite a thrilling story um, as these young boys unravel the mystery and get closer to danger as they get closer to the truth and to the six million dollars that is missing. <laughs> um... In many ways, I do like it. I'm uh, using this book to teach right now. We have some very, very good discussions going on uh, in class. My students are very bright and uh, thoughtful. So this has been a good uh, book for um, facilitating those kinds of discussions about corruption and, and um, poverty and you know, some other stuff. Um, the book is fine. I think it certainly d does feel thrilling. However, my I do have some problem with it, which is just that I feel like I would rather read a story about the Philippines, about the poverty and the corruption and this kind of stuff, by a Filipino, Filipina author. Just my thoughts. <laughs> uh, it just feels kind of strange to <laughs> read a story of a foreigner telling uh, about the plights and the horrors that people in another country face when you are the <laughs> foreigner. <laughs> anyway, uh, just my uh, complaint about the book. Uh, that said, while I was reading it, it reminded me of this fantastic novel, uh, not novel, a uh, fantastic movie uh, that I've seen. I'm forgetting the name of the director, but I believe it is called uh, Manila in the Claws of Light or something like that. And oh my God. Now, if you want a story, <laughs> this is turning into slightly a movie review. I don't have much to say. It's perfectly fine. But mm, if 
feel like this story could have been, well, not this story, but another story by a Filipino, Filipino author could have been uh, better. <laughs> Just my thoughts, anyway. Um, anyway, Manila in the Claws of Light is an excellent story that covers some of the same uh, uh, pathways, except it doesn't follow young children, it follows a young man and his search for his ex-girlfriend, or his girlfriend who went missing uh, when she came to Manila uh, on a job offer, and she has been sold into uh, basically sexual slavery to a, I believe it was a Chinese man. It might have been Malaysian. I can't remember for sure. I think it was a Chinese man who bought her and he keeps her locked at home and he's to be uh, his wife and give him a family. Um, and this young man does everything he can to make money and get by. Uh, not quite in poverty, uh, he's just poor, I suppose. Um, not quite in poverty like these boys, not searching through trash, but uh, the difficulties he faces and the, uh, yeah man, the difficulties he faces and the sort of moral corruption that he comes uh, across, uh, whether it's his bosses that he comes in contact with or uh, the woman who promised this his girlfriend a job or or the Chinese man or uh, the people around him or the uh, sex trade in general um, I mean it's just such a good movie <laughs> and it it doesn't have a happy ending like this one um, but it is a really powerful powerful movie and uh, I think everyone should watch that movie. Uh, I really like it. I can't think of who the who the director is, though. But wow, I do believe that is actually made by a directed by a Filipino. Um, oh, it's such a good movie. He's got another really good movie that I I don't remember the name of either, and that covers similar subjects but focuses mostly on. Um, a young woman and her relationship with her mother and and this man that comes into their life uh and oh, his movies are so good okay bye <laughs>